Overnight, Russia invaded Ukraine with air and missile strikes, as well as ground forces coming in from three directions. Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, has also been attacked. For more on this, we have Ambassador Stephen Mann. He served as the U.S. Ambassador to Turkmenistan, a former Soviet Union country, from 1998 until 2001. He's also worked for the State Department, took assignments and a fellowship in Russia. Ambassador Mann, thank you so much for joining us. First, Russia has officially invaded Ukraine. What are your thoughts on this? Well, it's, it's an outrage. And this is the second Russian invasion of Ukraine. The first, of course, being the, the 2014 seizure of Crimea and occupation of the Southeast. So it really, it is, it is a major, major move by Putin and an unwise one that the West has to counter. Ukraine was part of the USSR, and one thing that we're hearing from the Kremlin is that people there see themselves as Russian and not Ukrainian. From what you've seen on the ground, is that true? No, it's not true. Um, there is, uh, of course, a certain proportion of Ukraine that has Russian rather than Ukrainian as their native language. But this pretext that the Kremlin is offering, that Russian ethnics are threatened, has no basis in reality, and it is frankly a big lie. And we've been hearing from the West and the UN and NATO that we need to watch out for false flag narratives. And even last night at the UN um, emergency meeting, we heard Russia say, hey, we're the victims here, Ukraine is the aggressor. How um, prevalent is this false flag thing going to be? Well, it's, it's part of the, the much wider disinformation that the Kremlin-controlled media and Kremlin spokespersons have been putting out. So I, I think this is not getting any traction outside of Russian media, and we can see it for what it is. And President Biden has announced sanctions and says more are coming. But the other day we heard Russia's foreign minister say, hey, we've had sanctions before. That's fine. Are these sanctions going to be enough? Uh, we can't ask of sanctions more than sanctions can do. Sanctions can't be the only response. So in this crisis, the West has to, and I'm sure is, looking at reinforcing the military defense of the Baltic states, being open to assistance requests from the government of Ukraine, and of course, other potentially threatened governments like Georgia. But in terms of sanctions, what comes now, I hope, is sanctions on a different scale. And I hope we see the sanctioning of all Russian banks it's time also to bring swift sanctions into play and very heavy tech sanctions against Russia. And former Russian ambassador Michael McFaul said that he thinks this is just the beginning and Vladimir Putin is going to continue to try and do this as long as he's in power. And now, just recently, the Baltic states have um, called for Article 4 of NATO, which calls for a special convening if they feel threatened. Should the Baltic states feel threatened right now? Well, I think they have to be because Putin is embarked on a long-term plan to reconstitute a 21st century version of the Soviet Union. Now, the Baltics always were different historically from the other republics. But yeah, Article 4 is precisely what should be invoked right now. And let's pray we don't get to Article 5. And then finally, Russian President Putin appears to have threatened nuclear action on the West in that possibly pre-recorded video. Should the West help Ukraine? Is this something everybody in the West should be worried about, given Russia's nuclear arsenal? What we have to worry about is the fact that, this is, that Russia is once again an expansionist power. And history shows that we do not come out well when we accommodate the, the, the dreams of expansionist dictators, like Putin in this case. 
So we need to be tough. We need to be confident. And NATO needs to be cohesive. Well, Ambassador Mann, thank you so much for your time. Uh, pleasure. Thank you.